Hey guys, welcome to another part of my dog sculpting series in ZBrush. Uh, so in the last part, we have pretty much sculpted the basic shape of the dog, and uh, I have showed you with the sphere how I have created the head of the dog and the rest of the body part. So uh, in this part, let's proceed with adding a more detailing. So currently, I am sculpting my claw and uh, making my fingers a little bit more wider, and I'm bringing them out so that. It should look visible because when we'll render in the end from a distance, I don't want uh, my fingers to look too small. So that is why I am making it a little bit uh, bigger so that uh, even from a distance, it should look visible and uh, having some volume. So for this purpose, I'm using my move brush and uh, uh, according to my reference, I'm just bringing them out. So creating a basic shape in ZBrush takes a little bit amount of time. So you have to create something until you're not satisfied with the uh, shape with, with a given reference. So I'm just looking at it from all the different angles, look from front and the side, and uh, now I'm sculpting it from the front. A little bit just shrinking it inside. So now I am adding volume uh, to the forearm uh, from all the angles so that it should look uh, that it, it is having some volume and uh, now I am sculpting my plaster as you can see that with the help of standard I am just sculpting the plaster. So giving shape to anything in ZBrush uh, takes a significant amount of time and you should allow yourself to give that much time to make your base sculpt look convincing and uh, smooth. So never rush with your base mesh and uh, as time will pass and with practice your sculpting speed will also increase. So from bottom I'm just adjusting the shape because it is not looking good and from front it is looking very parallel it is not having uh, any dynamic shape so it is looking very parallel so uh, I'm just correcting the shape And there's one thing uh, good about ZBrush is that it gives you the flexibility to sculpt uh, without tracing. Like with minimum references, you can complete your sculpt in a regular pose. And after sculpting that in a pose, you can give them an appealing pose. Like if you do not want it to be standing or in a T-shaped or A-shaped. Uh, so you can, with the help of... Uh, few tools in zbrush like you you can use masking and many other tools to create a dynamic pose so that in the render it should look good and now i'm sculpting the bones 
so that it should be visible and uh, my paw should look a little bit solid so these are the bones which will be connected to your fingers I'm just smoothing out the shape so that it should look good. Now uh, my paw is somewhat uh, is showing some uh, volume, and I am pretty much uh, happy with the shape coming, but it's still not there. I am working on the shape. So a little bit just pushing down the geometry. Coming back to the eye, uh, let's add some depth to the eye because right now my eye is looking very flat, it is not having uh, depth, and my eyeball is also out. So, let's just create a curvature outside my eye cavity. So as I am sculpting uh, a little puppy, so I will not be adding uh, much wrinkles to the body of the dog because uh, in the end I am going to create a fur in Maya. So a lot of the wrinkles which I will be creating right now, so that will be hidden inside the fur. So I am not giving much time to create those wrinkles. But still I will add some wrinkles so that even without the fur, it, my skull should look little bit convincing and uh, somewhat smooth so now I'm adjusting the back foot and uh, sculpting the hawk and the belly is little bit down so I'm just shifting it up because it is very much closer to the ground So a few minutes back, uh, my forearm was looking very parallel, but now it is looking better from the front. Adjusting my head size. So in this video, I'll also be creating the mouth cavity and the rest of the mouth part like uh, the flew, the lips and the teeth. So in some time, I'll uh, be adding those two also. So little by a little bit, I'm pushing my uh, back foot and my forearms a little bit up. Thank you. 
I'm just going to make a poly group of my ear so that in the end I can closely work on my ear without making my head visible. giving my eye uh, an oval shape and also adjusting its shape from all the angles from lower angle from front from side and also from top So most of the sculpting I, I do with my move brush at every stage of my sculpt, I use my move brush a lot. Also smoothing my surface. Now adding few forms to the mouth and making uh, my eyebrows and my mouth little bit visible. Adding some volume to the nose also. So I consistently do not work on the single body part. I have a habit of shifting uh, to different body parts. Like a uh, few few minutes I'll sculpt the ears, few minutes I'll sculpt the eye and in the next few minutes I'll sculpt the nose so I'm not consistent to only one body part I feel bored so that is why I shift uh, to different different body parts So I've just made an outline of the nose with the help of damn standard and again I'm uh, smoothing out the surface of the nose. And now my nose is looking much more uh, visible and uh, looking like my reference. Adding a uh, shape to my lips, to my dog's lips. So I'm adding a minute wrinkles uh, to the ears. I'm adding very minute because uh, behind the fur they will not be visible. But still I will add some wrinkles. So 
and now I'm making an outline for the eye like I have created for the nose Uh, so making an outline gives a very uh, clear structure of your uh, body parts so again adjusting my uh, eye cavity according to my eye ball because i do not want to leave any empty space and now i am adding some bump to the front uh, of the mouth and later i'll add some whiskers because you might have seen uh, that there is a slight bump on the front of the mouth of the dog whenever it growls or uh, whenever the shape of the mouth changes so you can see some bump here so i'm adding a bump only adding little little spot but i will smooth them out because i think it is too much I'm bringing my ears a little bit closer to my head because there is a little bit gap between my ear and the head, so I have minimized the distance. And also, I think the mouth is a little bit uh, more bulky, so I have to make it a little bit slim. And now I am adding some anatomical shapes uh, to my shoulders. I'm creating my back part. So that my dog uh, look uh, should look a little bit more convincing and realistic. Just giving volume to his abdomen, his back, and uh, to the front side of the foot. So it has started to look uh, very much bulky. Now I'm adding a little bit volume to my bones. So uh, my dog has almost uh, started to look like a pit bull because it is looking very much bulked up, like it is having very strong muscles. Uh, so I will smooth it out. 
nothing to worry about yeah from all the angles it is looking very bulky Now I'm smoothing the uh, my forms and little bit pushing my geometry inside because I want my copy to look smaller. Also, I'm adjusting my mouth shape. And now it is looking uh, better. And whenever you uh, move your geometry, try to bring your uh, lower subdivision because it is very easy to move your geometry with your lower subdivision on. Moving anything with higher subdivision uh, will be a great difficulty because when your geometry is very complex, it becomes very difficult. And now I am going uh, to create uh, the cavity of my mouth. Again, I'm taking a sphere, and now with the help of move brush, I'm going to uh, shape my gum. Since you have seen that I have made my geometry transparent so that I can easily fit my cavity inside my uh, mouth. So I'm sculpting at a very low subdivision. Once I will uh, fit it inside my uh, mouth cavity, I'll mirror it for the down uh, cavity, for the down side. Adding a little bit shape here. Now I'm going to mirror it for the downside. So I have just duplicated and now I'm using the mirror tool. Bringing it down. So again adjusting my lower geometry. You can also call it as the flu of the dog. So dog lip is also called as the flu. Uh, 
I'm just fitting it inside my mouth cavity so that there should be no uh, space visible. smoothing my geometry and also adding some uh, so I want to bring my uh, flu a little bit up so I have mask my uh, lower part of the flew and now I am bringing it slightly up so that it should be more visible when uh, the mouth of the dog is open and now it is clearly visible and this is and also it is Having volume here, it is not looking very thin. So now I'm going to add uh, some uh, space for my teeth. So I'm creating holes for the teeth to fit in. So the teeth are not completely circular in shape, so I'm just flatting it out. And uh, with the help of another sphere, I'm just going to block my teeth. So I'll be uh, creating only the lower part uh, of the teeth and then I will mirror it. Uh, for the uh, up part of the teeth for the upper gums so now again shaping it with the help of move brush so for sculpting anything in ZBrush you do not need uh, many brushes only there are five six fundamental brushes and with those brushes you can almost sculpt uh, every part of your geometry the only thing you need uh, for sculpting in zbrush that you should be comfortable with the interface of zbrush and uh, a little bit uh, shortcuts you should be uh, knowing to speed up the sculpting process. So I have sculpted a very uh, small teeth. So 
and I've just duplicated it. Slightly changing the shape of the teeth because because I do not want my all teeth to look identical. Just in my third teeth here. And this will be a little bit different from the other teeth because I want it to be pointed. So again, I'm adjusting my teeth to fill my cavity properly. leaving no space between my cavity and my geometry of the teeth. So my one side of the teeth are now completed. And now what I'll do, I will uh, merge my all teeth together and then I'm going to mirror it. Slightly pushing uh, my sleeve and my teeth inside of the cavity, mouth cavity. And then now minimizing the distance between my teeth. There is very much gap between my uh, teeth so I'm just minimizing the distance between them
adding uh, a little bit depth uh, to my gums Now I'm masking my upper part of the gum and uh, making my gum uh, visible from the front side. And again adding space for my teeth here also in the upper part of the gum. And the process will be exactly the same. going to the teeth and duplicating and then mirror it so I have mirrored it in the wrong direction so again I am going to mirror it and now I am just bringing that down so I have to adjust my uh, feet because they are not at the correct position so it's now again I'm slightly moving them up so my gum and my teeth they are very much visible from the front side and currently it is giving a feel like my dog is very angry and is it is growling at someone so I have just pushed my upper part of the gum inside and now I am adjusting my cavity to make my gum visible
adjusting my cavity according to my upper part of the gum. So again, I'm taking a sphere for my tongue and in the same manner, again, I am uh, taking a move brush and adjusting my tongue according uh, to the cavity. So I'm going to dynamash my tongue. Keeping my tongue above the teeth and adjusting so that it should not uh, penetrate inside my teeth. So for the second part, I think this will be enough. I hope you like this video and if you like it, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon in the next part. Thank you for watching.